Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week the Chautauqua River got 50 broodstock Atlantic salmon. Striped bass are moving into their holdover estuaries, and black fishing continues to impress in Rhode Island. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Now, before we begin, I just want to remind everybody that this report can also be listened to as a podcast. Just go on iTunes or wherever else you find your podcasts, search for The Fisherman Magazine, and you should be able to tap and click your way in from there. Another thing I want to mention, the extended forecast, the extended weather forecast, appears to show a spate of mild weather coming up. This would be a great time to put some time into fishing. Uh, mild weather in December usually translates to better freshwater fishing especially. Also going to be great for holdover stripers. Don't let it pass you by. You can do your, you can do your holiday shopping from your phone sitting in the boat. Uh, get out there and if you do get out there, please send me, send me a report, send me some pictures. Love to see what you guys are up to. Danderson at thefisherman.com. Send them on over and we'll, we will include them here in this report. As we move over into Massachusetts, saltwater fishing is definitely kind of breathing its dying breath. Um, there were a few bright spots. There's some uh, giant tuna that showed up on Stellwagen. Water temps are still favorable out there. There's a lot of bait. So, you know, a small fleet of boats is out there trying to cash in on that bluefin Christmas bonus. Uh, the other thing that happened was that a a school of smaller stripers showed up outside the east end of the canal. Yeah, they were small, but they were blitzing. And, uh, you know, beggars can't be choosers in December. It was interesting and exciting to see that. Uh, lastly, if you're looking for, you know, if you have to get a saltwater fish, you could look around some of the south shore harbors or the east end of the canal, probably Sabiki up a few mackerel still. Uh, outside of that, the last thing I think you could probably do is if you get your boat in, hit Western Buzzards Bay and you probably could still find some blackfish. But other than that, things are definitely on the outs. But the freshwater fishing is more than making up for it. If you're up on the North Shore, the Merrimack River has been producing catfish and pike and bass of many different types, smallmouth, largemouth, and a few stripers. Uh, down on the Cape though, seems to be the epicenter as it always does at this time of the year. Um, the trout fishing has been very good and the bass fishing has been very good. I talked to Ian from Goose Hummock Shop. He said that he's been going out after work almost every day. Uh, when it's dark, he's been throwing shiners and doing well with trout and smallmouth bass. When he's got some daylight, he's been flipping the fly rod or throwing jerk baits. Um, with the fly rod, he's been doing really well with weighted woolly buggers, he said. And again, it's mostly smallmouth bass and trout, but he's getting a few largemouth and a few pickerel as well. A lot of action on those outer cape ponds. On the upper cape, uh, or the lower cape, I should say. Um, there is also also good action in the trout pond. So places like Peter's Pond or Hamlin, uh, or some of the other ones that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head here, but any one of those stocked ponds, and you can look on the uh, DFW website to see, to see which ones are the stocked ponds. They're all producing trout, especially the afternoons. The afternoons have been really good this week. Hearing about some nighttime action too on, on many of those ponds. If you're fishing at night, it's probably going to be some kind of a waking lure. I really like the Rapala J9. Just fish it as slow as you can possibly reel, just so you can hear it tick, 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 ticking through the darkness. And uh, get some really nice brown trout that way. Get some tiger trout that way. I uh, even caught a salmon that way one time. Um, and the same could be said for a lot of the Plymouth ponds, like Long and Little, uh, Mary's, some of the other ones that, are, that you know are stocked. And all these ponds, too, have the potential to produce some bass as well. And um, you know, overall, the freshwater fishing is good and it should hold up definitely through the month of December, if not far beyond, because we rarely get ice on the Cape. So open water options are, seem to always be there. And uh, that's a story that I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. And before we wrap things up completely in Massachusetts, I'm going to throw it over to the guys from Red Top and from Sportsport. And we're going to get some holiday gift ideas from them. Take it away, guys. Around the holidays, a lot of good things to get people around here, especially the anglers. Merchandise, everyone loves to get it. Uh, we got the Red Top Sporting Goods new hats right here, the new logo and everything, perfect stocking stuffers. Also along with that, being an angler myself, always need a good pair of pliers. These are the Kudu Titan ones, good for cutting braid, line, everything in that nature. 
even down to bait. And then personal favorite is these PK Sullies. Topwater plugs work very good around here in the Cape Cod Canal for catching big stripers. Happy holidays, Cape Cod anglers. Um, a couple good gift ideas this year are tackle boxes and tackle bags. This is just one of the ones that we carry. This is the Surf Right. Um, we have different sizes. Um, basically, it's perfect to carry any of your plugs, especially if you're gonna be surf fishing. Um, it's good for boats. It's pretty much good for anything. These are more directed towards plugs. We also have several different kinds of tackle boxes. Always a great gift. Um, we also have lots of fillet knives. This is just one of them. This is a really good one. I have this one at home. Really holds a really good edge. Um, this is the Danko flex knife. Uh, we have the seven inch and the nine inch. Um, and they come with a the sheath. They're pretty nice. One of the last things that would be really good for a Christmas present um, would probably be a good pair of waders. We have three kinds. These are the neoprene ones that'll keep you nice and warm in the winter for those who like to go for oysters and clamming. We also have breathable waders, which are better for the summertime. They won't keep you as warm. And we also just have the regular rubber ones, which are good anytime. Hey, happy holidays to all of our fishermen out there. In Rhode Island, it's still, it's a bottom fisherman's paradise out there. We've got blackfish that are biting really well from you know, inshore all the way out past block, codfish and black sea bass, they're all in the mix. Um, the one thing about the blackfish, the bite's still really good, but these fish have moved much deeper on average. Um, you can still get them at 50 feet of water, but if you want to target keepers and you want to maybe have a chance of getting a really big one, you got to go 80, 90, 100 feet. Um, I was talking to Tony from Booked Off Charters. He said that they went out every day last week, except for one day that they got blown out. Um, but he said they had limits just about every trip. They had one trip where they fell two fish short of a limit. They've been releasing some really big fish, including a 12 and a half pounder. Uh, the bite has been really good. Uh, Robbie Taylor from Newport Sport Fishing Charters was also out on, well, today, but for you, it'll be yesterday when the snow and rain and wind, and, uh, he put up a decent fish again. He always likes to go out and show everyone that they should be fishing on the days when most people won't go out. Uh, so the bite is still really good for blackfish, and um, I mean, there's just no sign of it slowing down. Whether you're fishing Newport, whether you're fishing South County, or whether you're steaming across and fishing Block Island, blackfish bite is good. When you get out to Block, you've also got a really good shot at sea bass and codfish as well, especially if you go south of the island. Lots of sea bass out there. Good numbers of codfish. The codfish still aren't fully entrenched. They seem to be moving around. Um, but they're just more and more of them are going to show up on these grounds as the water cools. So, you know, if you've got your boat in the water and you got the weather, definitely a great option right now to go out there and, uh, and find that mixed bag of bottom fish. There's just a lot going on. Striped bass wise in Rhode Island, there are fish still migrating, still migrating stripers moving along the South County beaches. Not a lot of guys out there chasing them and it's definitely more of an anomaly than it is a guarantee at this point. You have to be right place, right time, and everything would have to line up perfectly, but they're there. Uh, but the more of the striped bass action we're hearing about is happening in the ponds. Um, and it seems like there are more holdovers this year than most years. So there's in the Breachway ponds, you're finding them in the Point Judith pond, you're finding them. Uh, any tidal pond is a is a uh, has a chance of holding these fish and I've seen some really nice fish taken this year I've seen definitely fish that were over slot maybe even pushing up into the 40 inch range of course that's the exception not the rule most of these fish are going to be smaller um, but they're out there and the bite seems to be very good um, as far as freshwater fishing in Rhode Island goes not really hearing much uh, if I if I had to make a suggestion I'd say to fish the Wood River uh, good trout population in there very nice scenic place to fish and uh, you know once you get away from the road a little bit you could be anywhere you feel like you're in Vermont or New Hampshire or Maine or something like that it's a really nice scenic river with that offers you a really good shot at getting some trout and that's the story that I have for you guys this week in Rhode Island and now over in Connecticut it's kind of a battle between holdover striper fishing and freshwater fishing 
Uh, holdover fish are definitely moving into all the different rivers where they winter over. So you're finding them at the mouth of the Thames, you're finding them in the Connecticut River, you're finding them in the Housatonic. Right now is a great time to target the mouths of those rivers. In fact, some fish to 25 pounds were taken by surf fishermen outside the Connecticut River just a few days ago. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, as I mentioned in the intro, there the Chateket River got 50 broodstock salmon, some really big ones too, some fish into the teen size. And actually, my predecessor, Toby Lipinski, went out with Deep that day to help out with the stocking. We're going to throw it over to him now and get a little update on how that all went. Take it away, Toby. Hey, thanks a lot, Dave. Yeah, Toby Lipinski checking in here today. Um, actually helping out with the Connecticut DEEP with their... Uh, annual fall Atlantic salmon stocking. Uh, today I'm here on the Chetucket River uh, taking care of the, the stocking that they're doing. These are the big fish, the big breeders. They've been stocking some of the smaller ones the last couple of weeks, but the ones they're putting in this, this day uh, are, I guess, 15, 16 pound fish, uh, three year old plus, some really, really impressive Atlantic salmon. Uh, it's a very cool program that Connecticut runs for us. Um, it's catch and release fishery through the 15th of December. There's fish both on the Chetucket as well as the Naugatuck River, as well as a couple of lakes across the state. After the 15th, then it is a one fish per day uh, um, bag limit. You of course gotta have your uh, trout stamp, trout and salmon stamp, in addition to your regular old fishing license. So uh, it's been a pretty cool process so far. Got some video of it for y'all. Hope you can check it out and um, Again, give this fishery a shot. It is a very unique opportunity that we have here in Connecticut. Thanks, Toby. Really appreciate you taking the time to put that video together and keep our readers informed. Really appreciate that. Uh, the other thing that's really going good right now in Connecticut is the trout fishing in the Salmon River and the um, Farmington River. Guys are getting them using a variety of methods. We're seeing some really nice fish taken. Uh, some big brown trout especially. I've seen some really nice brown trout and a couple big rainbows as well. Uh, just really great fishing, awesome stocking program in Connecticut. And in the wintertime, the fishing on those rivers becomes a little more predictable and it becomes a little less crowded. So um, it's a great place to go if you really just feel like you gotta get that rod bent. Uh, last thing that you might, uh, might, you might give a try, you might try in Connecticut waters is sea bass fishing, but most of the guys now either don't have a boat in the water or they're heading all the way to Block Island. Something to remember about uh, if you do head to Block, if you catch a blackfish, you can't bring it home into Connecticut, uh, into Connecticut waters because black fishing is closed in Connecticut right now. But sea bass is still open, and codfish is still open, so you can go out and, uh, and cash in there, or you can hit some of the inshore ledges and probably scratch out a few for the, you know, for the cooler as well. Um, 
Before we wrap things up, I just remind you all, if, uh, if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, head over to the website, check out what we got going on. We got reports and articles that cover the entire region and outside the region. We have three different editions. We've got New Jersey, Long Island, and New England. And we cover everything in between all those areas. It'd be a great holiday gift for you to ask your aunt for, maybe. You know, if she's looking for something to get you. Uh, sign up, have her sign you up for a subscription, see what we're all about. And uh, I almost guarantee you'll be re-upping next year. If you're not interested in subscribing, at least give us a subscribe here on YouTube. Click the like button down there and give me a, hit that little bell thing down there so you get a uh, notification every time we post something new posting new stuff all the time uh hope you guys do well fishing this week enjoy the slightly warmer weather and uh thanks for watching we'll see you guys next week Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious anglers choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.